so now that we have a better understanding of what extension is and, and uh, its basis and a little bit about how it's configured, I'd like to move on to how extension is delivered. And we'll start with basic extension theory. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Essentially, it works like this. Together, the team of scientists, extension professionals, and agriculturists identify and elucidate challenges or the challenge that needs to be addressed. Then, again, together, they devise a plan to address the challenge, and that plan includes an applied research uh, uh, component, a knowledge transfer component, and adoption strategy component, uh, all in an integrated and, and comprehensive uh, program of extension. Again, I want to emphasize that it is the team working together, scientists, extension professionals, and the agriculturists. So once the plan is devised, then all the team members working together, each doing their own part, uh, execute the plan and make it happen. Ultimately, the industry utilizes the outcome of the research via the knowledge mobilization and adoption strategy. And they internalize this method or knowledge or tool that got developed through the applied research and the challenge is addressed and the sector advances. That's the basic approach we take in agricultural extension. So what this constitutes is essentially a cycle of problem identification, strategic planning re involving research, knowledge, mobilization, or transfer, adoption, uh, leading to sector change. But, it, but it's, not, it's not just a through put. It really exists in, in a continuous cycle. So continuous communication, continuous identification of challenges, continuous research, knowledge mobilization, adoption, and industry advancement. And the more that extension is developed, the more these kinds of cycles can, uh, there can be, and the more robust the cycle is, and the more uh, able the agriculture and food system sector is to uh, tackle its challenges and uh, move forward. Extension methodology is also pretty straightforward. The knowledge and mobilization, the knowledge mobilization and uh, adoption uh, component is a real people proposition. The extension professionals work with the sector and the people in that sector. Researchers and extension personnel first work with what are called innovators. They are the few agriculturists that are more daring and recognize the need to engage to solve a problem much earlier than the rest of the sector. So these, er, these innovators are willing to work with applied researchers, researchers and extension personnel to uh, execute the research and uh, see if it'll work, see if the method or tool or knowledge can in fact be developed. Once, once the knowledge tool or method is successfully developed through applied research, collaborating with innovators, uh, extension professionals then focus transferring that knowledge to early adopters. They're the larger group of progressive members of the sector, the progressive agriculturists. They're not maybe uh, innovators, but, but they sit back and, and watch the innovation uh, take, uh, take shape, take form. They're a little more re reticent, but, but they're still uh, paying attention and, and, and know that change needs to happen. So, so after the knowledge tool or method is adopted, 
uh, in part partnership between uh, extension personnel, researchers, and innovators, uh, early adopters uh, are the focus. And the, the knowledge then is transferred to these early adopters, and they uh, adopt it and make it happen on their farms. And then the innovators and early adopters demonstrate the viability of the new knowledge method or tool developed through applied research. And they in themselves become teachers, and they teach through the effective demonstration of this new knowledge tool or method to all of the rest of the sector, those that we call late adopters or later adopters. So extension programming focuses first on the innovators in the, sec in the sector, then on early adopters, and, then, and those early adopter and innovator farmers teach all the rest of, of the farmers in the, in the sector. And ultimately then, between the innovators, the early adopters, and the late adopters, the uh, vast majority of the sector adopts the new knowledge technology method and the sector is advanced. Extension professionals do recognize that there are always those that lag behind and, and in fact there's always some that are unwilling to adopt the new knowledge or method or technology and that's okay. Uh, they, they tend to do their own thing and, and uh, maybe fall behind or, or do something different. So these methods are a powerful pedagogy, a powerful way to teach and affect change. Probably the, the most powerful element of this model of education lies in working with early, uh, innovators and early uh, adopters who then become farmer teachers and facilitate what we would call farmer to, far to farmer knowledge transfer. When farmers teach other farmers, that is and demonstrate the, the effectiveness and value of an innovation, that is the most powerful form of teaching in the agriculture sector. And it is extension that facilitates that kind of knowledge transfer and adoption. So effective extension must be intentional and purposeful. It can't be a hodgepodge of one-off initiatives. It also must be strategic and well-planned. And I would add expertly executed. Also, effective extension is measured. The, the outcomes and impact impacts are measured so that uh, the, the, the effect, the efficacy of the extension program can be evaluated and assessed. So extension really is uh, a purposeful, strategic, outcome-oriented endeavor. Basic to any extension approach are, are informal education methods. There are many types of informal education methods, and they, they are not necessarily sophisticated, but it would really be really valuable for us to acknowledge them and, and, and understand uh, what they are and, and how they are used. Demonstrations, tours, and field days are important ways of disseminating new knowledge and new methods and, and tools. So demonstrations are, are typically done on farm, uh, showing uh, new ways of farming, new tools to use and how they're used. So for example, uh, extension programming might um, demonstrate 
how to use a new, new tillage implements or how new irrigation systems uh, operate. Field days are very similar to demonstrations, uh, but they're typically more related to uh, research. And uh, researchers invite farmers to their research plots, either at the uh, research uh, station fields or uh, the research on a farmer's uh, fields. And they talk about the research and the challenge that it seeks to address uh, at, at those field days, at those sites. And oftentimes field days occur over multiple years because, at the same site because the research is occurring over multiple years at the same site. And, and through these repeated uh, field days at a research site, farmers actually get to see the research and the new knowledge unfold as it occurs. And that's a very powerful way of researchers connecting with farmers and farmers understanding what it took to generate that new knowledge or that new tool or that new method and understanding better uh, how it can be implemented in their farm. Traditionally, Extension has produced lots of print materials, uh, research bulletins, manuals, production guides, uh, decision-making tools, etc. And they still do, and those are readily available in downloadable form online from any number of Extension uh, services uh, across North America. Uh, increasingly, many extension materials are in digital format and uh, particularly decision-making tools such as uh, degree day calculators or irrigation demand calculators and uh, pest management uh, calculating tools, those, those kinds of things. So this has become a very important part of uh, knowledge dissemination uh, in extension. Extension also puts on workshops, symposia, and seminars, very, very common uh, informal education methods. So, for example, uh, the Institute for Sustainable Food Systems a couple years ago put on a workshop uh, focused on cultivating Asian medicinal herbs in the Pacific Northwest and brought uh, interested farmers together to learn about the potential of, of growing those crops commercially. The, uh, the BC Horticulture uh, Association uh, puts on symposia and seminars frequently. So does UBC and, and other universities in uh, BC. Extension personnel also uh, put on short courses and schools. They, these differ from workshops and symposia and seminars in that they are more intensive and more extensive and, and occur not over a morning or a day or a couple days, but typically over many days uh, to months. So for example, uh, Washington State University, the University of Wisconsin, put on fruit short courses or fruit schools uh, regularly. And these are intensive week-long courses uh, uh, for farmers to teach them about innovations in fruit crop production, uh, to, to share with them new knowledge methods and tools developed through applied research. Uh, KPU and uh, UBC both have farm schools that are uh, less formal year-long programs designed to teach entry-level small-scale farmers the art and science of, of small-scale direct market farming. And then finally, extension personnel uh, utilize uh, industry conferences and make presentations at those conferences to disseminate information. 
So it's not unusual for extension professionals to work with industry organizations to uh, develop uh, uh, conference uh, agendas, conference programs, and it's not unusual for extension personnel, including applied researchers, to make presentations at industry conferences. So demonstrations, tours, field days, print and digital materials, workshops, symposia, and seminars, short courses, field schools, and industry conferences and, and presentations are all commonly used and effective informal extension education methods. Mm -hmm.